Welcome everyone to our USVI webinar presenting not only the USVI as a destination, but the Navigari yachting presence in the USVI. For those of you who have never chartered before, or some of you have never been to the USVI, you will be interested to know and hear why it's such a wonderful destination and we can't wait to see you there. So as I mentioned, we're uh, waiting for Kay to join us momentarily. Um, Kay is with the USVI Department of Tourism. She will be here shortly to co-present. I'm also here with Megan, and I think Megan, you can see us, perfect. Uh, Megan Hollister is with Navigari. She's a charter specialist. That means that she assists some of you, many of you um, in planning their charter vacation with us. My name is Marilyn O'Shea and I'm in charge of the marketing for Navigari. And if I haven't met you at the boat show in Miami, I look forward to seeing you at the next event. Um, so I'm gonna uh, wait and keep an eye on the uh, join list of participants to make Kay or co-host since we're having some difficulties. She will join us in a moment, hopefully. So just a few basics about who is Navigari. Some of you perhaps joined this webinar at the suggestion of a friend and you may not know a lot about us. So just a little bit uh, about who we are. So Navigari is the third largest yacht charter operator in the world today. We were founded in Sweden uh, over 20 years ago. So we celebrated our 20th anniversary last year. Um, today, we're predominantly a fleet of bare boats and we have some all-inclusive options. We have as well a few other options to sail uh, as a flotilla or within a sailing school. And we also have some uh, charter by the cabin options in some of our med destinations. But the vast majority of our guests charter bare boat uh, with us. We have a fleet of over 300 boats worldwide, a combination of sailing monohulls and catamarans plus a few power catamarans. So today, 11 destinations, uh, including the Caribbean, uh, the Bahamas. We're gonna talk about USVI more specifically today. And I think, yep, yeah, Kate is now in the presentation. So I'm gonna add her in, if you will just allow me to do so. There she is. I don't see my cursor, so it's a bit of a problem. Here it is. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Hi, Kay. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Doing great. Super nice to see you. I apologize for the technical difficulty today. So we just started with a presentation of who is Navigare. And of course, you will have a moment to present. And I would like to say we did not coordinate outfits today, but definitely uh, we can say Megan and Kay got on the same page. And I feel ah. like I should have worn some color tonight. Um, <laughs> So as I was saying, we're going to focus the presentation on the USBI today, but as you now know, we were started out of Europe and actually our first two bases, Greece and Croatia, remain some of our largest fleet and destinations today. So um, finally, Southeast Asia saw the addition of the Seychelles destination just last year. So we're continuing to grow and offer more wonderful destination for the guests that we serve. So a couple of yacht charter facts for you all to know. We think that sailing is a super exciting way to explore a new destination, particularly the U.S. Virgin Islands. And in the context that we know today of, you know, COVID and trying to travel safely, um, there's no better way than to sail with your friends, small groups, limited contacts with the crowds. The protocols, as Kay will walk you through uh, in a second, very simple. And it's a very flexible way to travel. This is not like a cruise ship. This is a different experience. This is not like an organized tour. You can set your own itinerary and there's no mandatory stops. You find a spot you love, just stay there an extra night. That's okay. So in the Caribbean and the Bahamas, the minimum charter duration is four days and you can check in any day of the week. So you would begin your charter at 4 p.m. on the first day and check out is at 10 a.m. on your last day. So that was just a few basics for some of you who, again, are new to chartering. I'm trying to cover um, kind of everything here. Now, with this, I would like to formally and now uh, let Kay speak and introduce to us uh, who she is and how she can tell us more about the USVI. In fact, um, how much time a year do you spend in the USVI, Kay? I get down about two to three times a year. That was pre-COVID. So uh -huh. now I'm about once a year, you know, I feel like it's time for me to go back now. I was down last in November. So I That's could really right. use, I could really use some vitamin C right now. 
Oh, I am totally with you. So I can stop presenting so that you may present now, Kay, whenever you're okay. ready. Thank you again right. for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. While we're doing this, I'll present the next slide so that we don't keep you waiting. And then we will go back to the USBI destination. As soon as I get the file loaded, I can share case presentation. So uh, a few things about Navigare that you may not know if you've never charted with us. We have a bit of a different positioning in the market. We really focus on a well-equipped and quality fleet. And we achieve this uh, by working with some of the best brands out there. So the most common manufacturers that are in high demand are represented in the fleet, including the, the newest catamarans from Lagoon, Fontaine Peugeot, Bali, in the Caribbean. You will see when you travel down, it's a, a major, majority of of catamarans that are offered. Um, the other thing that's really important for our charter guests to have a great stellar experience is yachts that are well maintained. So you should know that we own and operate our bases. So we have uh, obviously a special care in every yacht um, since we have our own technicians uh, servicing the yachts, our own customer care representative welcoming you at the base. So we're looking forward to seeing you um, you know, meet Eric and Annie at the USVI base. Uh, another important aspect of booking your charter is knowing how much you're going to pay and how to compare the different boats and options, but also knowing that you have peace of mind once you are there. And this is coming, um, this comes through our carefree pack at Navigare. So everything that you would need through your charter is included in this pack, even the yacht insurance. And because of this, it's very transparent. There's no extra line item. Everything is under one pack. And we like to keep it this way because it's very easy for you to know, you know what your total cost will be. Um, so again, no damage waiver or security deposit at the base, no hidden fees, which is very important. So when you compare and shop around, which you should do, um, and hopefully you, you, you uh, give Navigari a chance, you will see that we strive to be the most transparent. Another important aspect of picking the boat you're gonna sail on is being able to see the actual boat that you will be spending your vacation on. And so we're uh, working very hard to provide virtual tour and photos of all of our yachts and we're nearly there. So as new yachts enter the fleet, we immediately take photos of those boats. So you can see every cabin and you can see the configuration and you don't have just stock images from the catalog, which can be disappointed because you want to see uh, you know, current photos of the boat. So every few years, we also make sure that we post updated photos because it's important for you to know what to expect. Um, another um, key aspect of our support, once you are on a charter, is if uh, a technical difficulty um, uh, occurs, our base staff will respond within four hours. So we're going to be addressing the issue, fixing whatever needs to be fixed, remedy the problem, perhaps not in four hours, but at least provide you with a response. So you will never find yourself stranded. So depending, depending on the urgency of their repair, um, we will then um, come back to you and, and address the situation. Sometimes parts may be needed, um, that sort of thing will, will come up. Uh, the Navigari app is also a really important aspect of how we execute charters, and it's becoming um, more so in the Caribbean. It's uh, right now very much uh, in use in some of the larger fleets that we have in Croatia, for example, to expedite your check-in. So less paperwork, less time spent in line means more sailing time, and that's we know is important to you. And, and finally, I uh, wanted to make sure you all know that Navigare uh, also has its own team of charter experts that are here to support you and they provide excellent care. Megan is one of our charter um, specialists team and she's uh, very excited to be here and help you and answer questions. Uh, they're very knowledgeable and they're here and they pretty much an answer 24 seven. I shouldn't quite commit to do that, but in the end it's true. They wanna make sure that you're going to have a grand time. And if you have last minute questions, they're there to answer you. And if uh, even you know months ahead of your charter, you're trying to plan everything to the T, uh, they are there to assist with that as well. So they know the destinations, they know Navigari, they know the boats, they know the fleet, they can guide you as well through your boat selection. Uh, and I wanna make sure since Kay just joined us as a participant, if she's back here, there she is. She went uh, out of presenting, so I'm gonna wait for her to come back. Um, 
since I still have the slides, wanted to uh, share a few words about the carefree pack. I mentioned this as a key differentiator. So depending on the destination, um, you'll have a few variations, but for um, the USVI specifically, the carefree pack includes the vessel insurance, as well as the linens and the towels, final cleaning of the boat, uh, your propane uh, tank will be full, your water tank will be full, uh, obviously fuel tanks as well, and you'll return the boat filled up um, when you're finished. Um, the carefree pack also includes the dinghy with the outboard. So again, not extra line items for things that you must have to complete your charter. Um, complete snorkel sets for every guest. And then um, part of the welcome pack is your basic startup supplies. So you don't have to you know, if you go on a 40 charter, you may not have to buy a set of sponges. So we'll provide you with, you know, starter pack of garbage bags, cleaning supplies, coffee filters, toilet paper, and so on. So the price of this pack varies by boat and destination. So I indicated some pricing here. Um, <clears throat> And for those of you who are not yet experienced charter guests, wanted uh, you to you know, be aware what to expect. So a, a charter boat is more or less like a vacation rental. You bring what you intend to use and wear for your vacation and the rest is pretty much supplied. So uh, you'll have an equipped kitchen that will have uh, you know, appliances provided, cooking utensils, um, serving dishes, and enough uh, dinnerware to accommodate your party. Uh, the cockpit area has cushions and a table to accommodate your meals. Of course, all the safety items are stowed on board and your cabins come with uh, you know, mattresses where the beds are already made. Uh, we recommend that for your luggage, you bring a duffel bag so that you don't have bulky suitcases to store uh, while you're underway. And finally, the, you know, the bathrooms, the heads, as we call them on boats, come fully equipped with what you would expect in a small bathroom at a hotel, just a little small. Um, so this is important to cover because we get these questions a lot, especially if you're new, we're trying to be mindful of that. I'm gonna make um, one more comment about bare boat versus crude. Um, in the USVI, the option to book a crude boat is only available um, outside of Navigare. So Megan or the rest of the team uh, on the charter team can help you find crew because we have uh, a roster of crew, but Navigare is not able to arrange this due to technicality at the moment with the USVI base. But what does this mean? Um, a bare boat charter means that um, you're, um, you as a guest, you will skipper the boat and you will not have hired crew on board. In uh, the USVI, including, um, well, I was mentioning Caribbean and Bahamas here, but the USVI specifically, no formal license is required. We will ask for your selling resume so we can make sure that you have ample experience to um, skipper the boat and you will be on your way. Now, hired crew can make the, the entire difference in your vacation, because if you want something more turnkey and hands-off, then this is perhaps the best option for you. So you may hire a skipper to operate the yacht and guide you with the planning of your itinerary, as well as perhaps a hostess to help with a little bit of light meal and a little bit of tidying up around the boat. So those are available and it's a daily fee so something to keep in mind depending on what you're trying to accomplish but again no no experience necessary and now that uh kay is back i guess i should be looking for that presentation from her so one moment and thank you for your patience we realize that this isn't always fun to work around here is the file um while i do this Kay, perhaps can you tell us a little bit about your role at uh, the you know, Department of Tourism for USVI? Yes, yeah, so basically um, we exist as an information source for um, travelers coming down to the US Virgin Islands. Um, we are especially useful for people who've never visited before. So uh, whether you have questions about our entry protocols or the best places to eat or the best beaches, even though they're all magnificent, those are the types of questions that uh, our tourism board can answer and then some. Um, me personally, I've been with the Department of Tourism for about uh, 19 years. 
now. So I currently hold a position of director of sales and I have seen a lot of growth and changes in the United States Virgin Islands with our tourism products, specifically when it comes to the sailing and charter yacht uh, segment of our tourism products. So I'm very excited that we have this opportunity this evening to share with you um, the spectacular sailing vacation you can have in the U.S. Virgin Islands because it really truly is a very stunning destination uh, to behold. So our focus, of course, is on sailing and yachting, but of course, the U.S. Virgin Islands has tons of different ways that you can experience the destination. But I tell people all the time, it's one thing to sail up to a beach versus driving up to it. It's just such a such a different experience to have. So to give you a little bit of context so you know where we are, we are just a short flight from Miami. So you can see the little flag there is positioned right next door to Puerto Rico. And there are four islands that make up the U.S. Virgin Islands, four main islands, St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Croix. And then Water Island is affectionately known as the fourth U.S. Virgin Island. Um, a little bit more about the destination. Uh, St. Croix, St. John, and St. Thomas and Water Island all make up the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, and there's lots of rich history and culture, um, breathtaking beaches. St. Thomas alone has over 42 beaches to explore. All of our beaches are public. So if you're sailing along and you see a, a beautiful cove and you want to anchor and jump off and um, enjoy your day there, you certainly can because all of our beaches are public in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Getting to us is very easy. Um, one of the silver linings during the pandemic has been the boom that we have experienced in tourist traffic. So with that comes um, kind of additional airlift into the destination. So on this next slide, you can kind of get an idea of all the different um, gateways that you can book your nonstop travel into either St. Thomas or St. Croix out of. So you have a lot of different options to get to us. And I always tell people it's very feasible to be leaving your house that morning and be in the U.S. Virgin Islands by two, three o'clock with a rum punch in your hand. So it's definitely very doable to get to us in one day. In terms of entry into the U.S. VI, U.S. citizens do not need a passport to travel to the U.S. Virgin Islands. And for those of you who, who are um, very familiar with charter yacht sailing and maybe very familiar with going into the British Virgin Islands, this is going to be very important um, because if you don't have your passport or you need to get it renewed or there's some issue with your passport, you don't have to worry about that in the U.S. Virgin Islands. You just would need your uh, birth certificate certificate with a raised seal and then a government issued ID like your driver's license. Non-U.S. citizens will need their passport uh, to travel to the U.S. Virgin Islands and of course um, abide by all U.S. immigration rules and policies. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're very close to the mainland. We're only two and a half hours from Miami, three and a half from Atlanta and JFK. So again, travel to us is very convenient and very easy. So a little bit about COVID. This is the big pink elephant in the room. Nobody wants to deal with or talk about, but we have to as a part of um, giving you the information on the destination. So right now we are considered to be in our safer at home phase of, um, I don't want to say reopening because we've been open really this whole time, but of normalcy. This is our new, new normal um, living in this age of COVID. Um, so what that means is you just have a few rules that you would need to follow when you come down to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Of course, this would be while you're not on your vessel. You can go on to the next slide, Marilyn. Um, to get into the U.S. VI, first of all, you would need to test and upload your negative COVID results within five days of the origination of your travel. So this little calendar really kind of makes it easy for you to visualize exactly when you need to take your test and then when you need to upload upload your negative test results to our travel portal. And you don't have to be vaccinated to come to the U.S. Virgin Islands. We don't have those types of rules in place. Whether you're vaccinated or not, you can come to the U.S. Virgin Islands. You just have to submit a negative COVID-19 test. 
you would do that to our travel portal. The website there is usbitravelportal.com. So you just upload your results there, fill out the brief questionnaire, and then you're done. When you arrive, just make sure you wear your mask and practice social distancing and good hygiene and follow the local guidelines and you will be all set. If you're coming back to the mainland, you do not have to test again to get back onto um, the mainland in the United States. So that's another good plus to choosing the U.S. Virgin Islands for your next sailing vacation. And then there you have the two websites you can turn to for updates on our travel protocols, usviupdate.com, and then our travel portal, which is usvitravelportal.com. So back to sailing, now that we've gotten all that heavy stuff out of the way. Um, really, really spectacular destination to explore. I think, I think, I could be wrong, and Marilyn, you may know better than me. I think this shot is the passageway between Lavongo and Congo, right there by St. John. That's what it looks like. I had the pleasure of snorkeling off of that um, space uh, a couple of times. So it's absolutely stunning destination. And if you have the opportunity to sail in the U.S. Virgin Islands, you will not be disappointed. So it's actually on my list to ascertain that this picture is where you said it was, because I don't know. <laughs> sure. I've only sailed in BVI. And now that we have oh. a place in USVI, <laughs> I have no excuse. So I will remedy this problem this year. You can count on please, it. Please, <laughs> please do. Please do. Now, at the bottom here, there's a little video that you can start at the bottom of this. You, it, there you go. You can see the play button. So this is a shot of our award-winning marina, the IGY Marina in St. Thomas. And um, as a native Virgin Islander, someone who grew up in St. Thomas during the 70s and 80s, our harbors were full of charters. So I told you earlier that we've experienced a boom in our traffic to the U.S. Virgin Islands. So it is a welcome sight to see all of these new sailors coming into our shores and experiencing the U.S. VI. And there's so many places and spots to explore, but just in the Charlotte Amalia Harbor, it's an excellent spot to just anchor and just hang out and chill, especially at night when the whole harbor and the city is lit up. It really looks quite spectacular right there, and I think Marilyn can probably attest to that some. So when I mentioned that you can have a spent fantastic sailing experience, um, I mentioned the four main islands, but we have hundreds of uninhabited keys all throughout the U.S. Virgin Islands. So they're all there for you to explore, each one more stunning than the last. And you have coves like Water Lemon Key and Maho Bay and Cinnamon Bay, all there for you to check out and explore. We have lots of marinas on all three of the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. So if you need to um, get some provisions or, or, or dock or what have you, you have your captains have a lot of different options uh, to choose from in the U.S. VI. So on this one, Marilyn, you'll just need to hit enter a couple of times because I have a little bit of information on this slide. There you go. So we do have some anchor rules that I want to make sure I, I share with you. So um, all vessels that anchor in the waters of the U.S. Virgin Islands are required to attain a long-term anchoring permit and pay long-term anchoring fees. Long-term is 14 days or more. You probably won't be doing that with Marilyn, but you never know um, if you decide you want to stay and stay for good. Hit you hit good, to one know. good to know. We've been getting a lot more requests for longer charters, so it may come up. <laughs> Yes, you never know. You never know. Um, hit, hit it one more time for me, Marilyn. Got another little tidbit for you. So in response to all the traffic that we've been getting from boaters and yachters into the U.S. Virgin Islands, we've added 100 anchor moorings as well. So they're all throughout the U.S. Virgin Islands, many of them in the national park, because I didn't mention St. John is home to our national park in the U.S. Virgin Island. So the beaches that are in the park are all are protected, just like on land. So they are going to be some of the most stunning, beautiful beaches you've ever seen in the world. So you definitely want to take advantage of that. Okay, next slide. 
So we do have some Marine events as well. For those of you who are Marine fanatics and you want to stay on top of what's going on, because I know once you come down once, you want to, you're going to want to come back for some of the other boating and yachting events that we have in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So uh, we have several regattas, uh, a spring yacht show. We also have uh, two yacht shows uh, in the winter as well, in November and December, uh, both of them in St. Thomas. So you have a lot of opportunities if you like to get out on the water and mix it up with other um, boating enthusiasts to do, certainly do that when you come down to the U.S. Virgin Islands. A little bit about some of the activities. I did send you a abbreviated presentation, Marilyn, because I know we were kind of maybe running a little long, but St. Thomas, you have tons of things to do with regard to shopping and sightseeing, um, lots of aquatic activity as well, great dining. So if, um, if any of those things are things that you may be interested off the water, St. Thomas does not disappoint. You have plenty to do there. On the next slide, a little bit about St. John. As I mentioned, it is the smallest U.S. Virgin Islands, only 19 square miles. The National Park is one of the biggest draws to that island, but there's also the Annaberg Sugar Plantation. Um, great sailing uh, from St. John as well. Great kayaking, fantastic dining. So if you like kind of hanging out with other uh, tourists and locals, great dining and shopping scene right there in Cruise Bay. And then in St. Croix, which is the largest of the three U.S. Virgin Islands, it's about a 40 mile um, distance from St. Thomas. So I don't know if you've already touched on if people were interested in going to St. Croix, because it would be a longer sail from St. Thomas. But it's such a stunning island as well. You have the underwater U.S. National Monument that you can explore, tons of history and culture, two uh, rum distilleries and a vodka distillery. So lots of things to do on that island as well. Yeah, it's my island for sure. Um, we will be talking about um, sailing grounds in a moment. Uh, it is it is possible to sail to St. Croix, but generally for the longer charters because it is a, a farther distance. Definitely. So in short, the USBI has a lot to offer from our stunning beaches, our action-packed activities on all three US Virgin Islands, tons of things to see and do and experience for the first time, whether underwater, in the water, on land. Um, there's just so much to see and do and explore in the US Virgin Islands. But again, our captivating beaches, our, our world-class diving that you're gonna find in St. Croix, um, our beautiful hikes and gorgeous sugar mill ruins. It's just so much to take in. And when you book that sailing vacation, you have an opportunity to share with your friends and family all of the wonder and beauty of the destination. So I hope you'll be down to see us soon and that we can personally take you through all of the three or rather four U.S. virgins and of course, all of the uninhabited keys that are there as well. Absolutely. It's some of our social media handles. So if anyone would like to follow what's going on with the U.S. Virgin Islands, they most certainly can um, jump on and see what we're doing. And I thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Gay. Um, as, uh, as you mentioned, there's a lot more to, to kind of go over as far as where and what. And, and, and for, for, uh, for us, um, we're actually updating right now what we call our chart briefing. So a chart briefing is a time that we spent generally face to face with our guests to explain some of the things that they can do, some of the areas that they should uh, you know, either avoid because they might be dangerous or go to because they're beautiful. And I think uh, we are just now preparing this chart briefing to be part of a video like we have done for some of our other destinations. And we're going to consult and work with you to include kind of the hot spots um, for the different, you know, keys or bays where, you know, where to dine, where to play, what kind of activity can you do? So we'll incorporate that into our chart briefing with your help. Um, super excited to try and, and do that. So I'm going to um, jump back onto the presentation that Navigari prepared, but Kay, please stay with us because I'm sure we'll have some questions and we're going to need you. Um, no problem. <laughs> uh, and thank you again for, for participating. So just as we kind of flipped around some of the orders of the slides, 
uh, not, a, not an issue at all. We were finishing to talk about crew. And so if you've never chartered before, there are options for you to get assistance, including a, including a skipper, because you may not have um, the experience to, to sail the boat on your own. Um, a couple of other things that we should mention, obviously sailing is for everyone. Sailing is a great activity for family and groups, no experience required. However, if you will skipper the boat, uh, we will require um, that you demonstrate experience so you can navigate the vessel safely. So this is part of the sailing resume collection, but you do not need a license. So if you have demonstrated experience and we can validate it for you, you can charter a Navigari boat, including in the USVI. Now, I say it is for everyone with a caveat that if you are amongst um, those of our guests who have limited mobility, you know, you need to be aware that there is good balance required to do some of these activities because it's, it's not like a condo. It will have some rocking motion and it will require perhaps to get in or out of the dinghy, in or out of the water. So of course, you know, know your limits and be aware that there are stairs as well to access the cabins and or the flybridge, uh, which is the upper area of the catamarans that we offer. Um, and then the last thing to know, if you've never chartered before, uh, you know, come with an open mind, come with a plan and be ready to scrap the plan um, or at least modify. Sailing conditions will vary uh, due to weather and sea state and wind. And so you may not find yourself going to the places you thought you might go, though everything is pretty close distance in the USVI. And we were going to mention that St. Croix is um, by exception approval by the base. So if you have been there before, if you are a proficient sailor, we are going to be able to approve sailing to St. Croix simply because it's a longer distance. Uh, and it also means that because it's farther away, we cannot make chase calls. If we need to support you with some failure of equipment, for example, we will not be able to do so in St. Croix. So with uh, that exemption approved, you can find your, your way to St. Croix. Um, just, uh, just know that the sailing conditions uh, may, may change your plan a little bit. Now, um, we've talked a, a little bit about the Charter Basics. I wanted to cover a little bit more of the USVI. Um, and here is uh, kind of a picture of the outside of the base as it's coming together. We're in expansion mode. So we basically took over this area of Breno Bay and we're growing our base there with uh, about, what is it, a dozen boat now, Megan, that we have? Okay. And uh, Megan will unmute when she will contribute a little bit later in the presentation. So you can see from this map that we are located only 20 minutes from the St. Thomas Airport by cab. So it's a quick ride. And here is a picture of some of the boats. Uh, clearly the boom on the bali here was not uh, in finished, installed or something. So bear with me. But uh, this shows you the, the location of the Navigari fleet in the USVI. So speaking of yachts available, okay, so it's eight boats at the moment, okay, close enough, uh, but we're looking to add more boats, and in fact, we have new boats incoming, so it will probably be 12 before the end of the summer or the beginning of the next season, uh, at the moment ranging from 42 to 50 feet. And uh, if you're not familiar with those yacht model, the name um, Lagoon, Bali, uh, Fontaine Peugeot, those are the brand of the builders. And then the number next to it gives you an indication of the size. So the Lagoon 50 is approximately 50 feet in length. Uh, I indicated the number of cabins, which are reserved for guests. And then the crew berth, which are typically for crew, but if smaller uh, people in your party, perhaps teenagers have their sea legs, they are welcome to use crew berth as well, as long as we don't exceed the max capacity of the yacht being chartered. So this gives you an idea of the boats available and you can also find those online. So if you go to the Navigari site and you browse the uh, USVI destination, you will find the boats along with availability and pricing and details on the uh, itineraries, including this one. So this one is focused around the USVI, which is typically more appropriate for uh, some of the shorter stays that you would have in the USVI waters. We'll touch on, on BVI. In fact, Megan, do you want to speak about the access to BVI? Because it's a question we've been getting a lot and people who registered for this webinar were asking. So perhaps we can talk a little bit about that. 
I'd be happy to. I also just noticed that Kay was responding to Charlie about this directly. Um, you can definitely sail to the BVI. You first thing to consider though is how long is how long, much time do you have because it will add a chunk of time, a waiting time, because you're going to have to register through Sail Clear and get certification and clearance through Sail Clear first before you can even attempt to do so. Then you have to go through customs and pay your cruising tax per person per day. And then based on what I'm seeing, what Kay's saying, you're going to have to test then to get back into USVI. Is that correct, Kay? Yes, that is correct. So for um, if you were coming in domestically from the mainland into the USVI, your testing window is five days. But since BVI is international, your testing window goes down to three days. Mm -hmm. So it's, it adds a couple extra layers. So if depending mm -hmm. on how much time you have, you might just want to stick to the USVI and enjoy that. If you really want to get to the BVI, you can. There are just many added steps. Yes, and it definitely makes more sense if you have a longer charter and you want to explore more of the islands. But as, uh, as Kay mentioned, there's so much to see uh, with a USVI that we're hoping that will work. And then if you want to sail BVI at a different time, you can also fly directly into Tortola and sail with us out of BVI. Um, so this is just one itinerary. As we mentioned before, there is no set pace or set stops. Uh, and when we review the charter with you at the base, uh, we explain to you some of the areas that you might want to avoid, uh, depending on the weather forecast. We will also share with you uh, perhaps um, alterations to your plan. Um, and Megan, I, we were talking about the carefree earlier. I uh, wanted to verify we do have the weather updates provided to the guests through the cell, or is this only BVI at the moment? My understanding, we do have that, but give me one moment. I'm going to double check that. Okay. We don't have Wi-Fi. Well, whether you use the VHF on board or the mobile phone that is provided for only specific destinations, you actually have weather updates. Um, and so we, we, we guide you and we show you how you can access those updates as well. But generally, as you start your charter, we have a, look, a good, you know, good visibility on the next few days ahead and can also guide you on uh, you know, perhaps appropriate selling distances uh, for the current conditions. So we can get back to you on that. Uh, I know for sure the BVI has the local GSM you know, phone with the weather updates and I wanted to verify for USVI, um, it might be coming. So this slide is a little bit heavy to read but it kind of recaps um, what we were talking about here with Kay. So I'll just skip it for now and you can access it when you go back to the presentation. Again, the presentation will be available on the YouTube channel of Navigar Yachting and on the website. Um, wanted to spend a little bit of time discussing charter pricing because a lot of you uh, have no idea what to expect from a charter uh, with us and in general, a charter price. So the prices quoted here are for your bare boat um, price with a carefree pack for the entire boat. So this is the cost for the boat for that duration um, out of our USVI location. Um, I put a few sample dates, uh, actually Megan pulled these for, uh, for us for April, June, November. Um, we are, uh, you know, we have way more availability. We're open almost year round. So you can definitely check out those availability in real time on the website. But the Lagoon 42 and the Bali 4.2 are equivalent size boats. Uh, both offer four cabins, so they could accommodate up to four couples, for example, or two families with children. And what we did is we broke down the cost per guest and you can see for you know, a week in the USVI in April or June, you will um, have a very reasonable cost per person of $1,200. Now, that does not include your food and provisions, right? Uh, Megan, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. An average per person price for food, provisions, fuel, every, all the other extra um, fees would be about 1,500 to 2,000 per person for a week's charter. So you'd wanna calculate that. Okay, and that includes everything. Everything, yes, everything, okay. including a, including a um, skipper and a and a hostess. Okay, so this is in the case where you have two full crew on board. Okay, Correct. all inclusive price. I would make it fifteen hundred to two thousand per person. Okay, added to the price you see there. And then, if you're interested in a larger boat, um, you can jump into some of our. 50 foot type catamaran. So the Bali 4.8 is about 49 feet. The Lagoon 50, it's just a little bit bigger than that. So the 4.8 from Bali, a brand new vessel that offers five cabins and you can charter this boat for around $1,400 per person in November, or you could do the Lagoon 50 
Uh, and actually the price here is a little bit less because it's actually a day shorter, but they're equivalent boats otherwise. Um, the number of cabins um, does matter. Uh, and of course, the, the layout and kind of the style. So as you become more experienced as a charter guest, you may decide you prefer one type of boat over another. And this is where speaking with somebody like Megan is really helpful because she can explain to you what's different about these boats. For instance, the Bali is known for having an exterior cockpit area where the forward deck is actually fully decked. So instead of the net trampoline that you may see on some of the catamarans, it's fully decked with an extra dining area. So this is all the knowledge that you can get, of course, doing your homework and speaking with our charter specialists like Megan. So this is just, again, some examples. There's many, many more availability. Um, and just wanted to give you, the links here will be posted on the description of the video. So you will not be able to click on them right now, but we will give them to you after this recording is posted. If you wish to contact Navigara and talk to Megan and the rest of our team, you can call this 1-800 number. It's 800-807-807. Uh, 1562, or you can contact us by email or chat with us online. So if you browse the Navigari website, you'll find more details about the USVI destination, the travel protocols for our different destinations, and much more, including yacht ownership in Navigari in the Navigari fleet, which you may have considered in the in the past and will want to revisit or perhaps um, discuss with us uh, either by phone or at an upcoming boat show. And again, um, this is the website for the uh, USVI Department of Tourism. Uh, we were so fortunate to have Kay with us today. So wanted to open it up for questions. I apologize, we're running a little bit long since uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty in the beginning. But if you have any questions, um, now is a great time to either raise your hand or type it up in the chat question, ideally. Um, and we just wanted to thank you once again for sharing your time with us. I think we have a few offline questions, Megan. Did you want to answer some of the offline questions that we had? Let me take a look. I think we had questions about mooring balls, and I think that Kay did a great job. You guys have 100 mooring balls you added. Is that right, Kay? That was a concern. There's so much to do too. That was other questions is they had people weren't as familiar. So the restaurants and the the um, those um, morning balls, as as you know, you can imagine, there's a ton of them. But we will um, cover that in our chart briefing. Mm -hmm. So we'll indicate um, more clearly um, on the map, you know, where you can get water, where you could get fuel, where you can find those morning balls, and we can also place the recommended anchorages. So typically, this information is covered already in the live chart briefing at the base. But we will we will be recording uh, this information as well, so you can have it ahead of time. Uh, and there is no two basic questions. So please, no. if you feel like yeah. a lot of this either doesn't make sense to you yet, or we perhaps overlooked something basic and you want to ask, feel free. This is the time to do so. Yeah. <laughs> How strict is the international boundary when traveling around? My understanding is it's very strict. <laughs> <laughs> Don't test that. <laughs> no, um, being at just being at the Miami boat show, we had two people mention it recently that that it was enforced. <laughs> okay. Is that correct? Yes. Can you speak to that? <laughs> yes, yes. So just stay where you're supposed to be. <laughs> be very and, aware of that. Yes. Yes, you do have to be aware. Mm -hmm. it's and important. I'm seeing a few chats that are coming like encrypted where uh, Yeah, I can't understand them. I'm not sure what why I, ha I can read on my end. Um, I know you answered them, and I all it is for me is garbled letters. So I apologize. Too. Do you see the text from Charlie? Um, Kay? Yes, he's asking, Do you have a written description of a typical seven day charter with suggested things to see, do, and eat? <laughs> um, so on the Navigari website, the map I just showed, which has the suggested itinerary, will have um, some of the recommended spots. It will not be necessarily comprehensive with all of the eating because a lot of people that charter for seven days don't go out three meals a day, right? But we will be sure to uh, augment that um, very soon because we're working on some improvement to not only the destination page, but as I said, the chart briefing. So if you have specific questions in the meantime, reach out to your charter agent. That's why they're here, uh, including the Navigare staff, because they can definitely guide you on these questions. That's I what think I'm just to jump in there too, um, because we get a lot of questions as well, because people are so familiar with BVI and they want to have a Foxy's experience um, when they're in the USVI. So there a couple of places that I would suggest that people always like are Cruise Bay, 
um, is a really good spot to hang out, eat, drink. Um, if there are any country music fans in here, Kenny Chesney does have a house in St. John. And if you're <laughs> lucky, you might catch him hanging out in Cruise Bay, singing and whatnot. But that's a really chill atmosphere. You have dozens of restaurants all within walking distance and bars. So that's a good spot to stop, anchor, eat, drink, what have you. And then um, in St. Thomas, the American Yacht Harbor, also known as Red Hook. That's a great spot to pull up to. Lots of great dining, great Mexican, um, lobster, seafood. I mean, and people are just hanging out, just conversing, drinking, having a good time. So if you like pub crawls and things like that, you can do those easily in those two spots. Okay, terrific. I saw that there were some earlier questions. So if we miss them, it's because they appear encrypted. I'm not really sure why. Um, I can read it. Do you want me to read the, any of these uh, to sure, you? Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right. Paul and Lori are asking about the anchoring permit. Is it still necessary to get the 14-day permit? So I'm guessing that's probably in reference to what I had um, referenced right. in my presentation. And that's really for if you were going to be anchored there for that length of time. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Marilyn really kind of touched on that most charters don't last that long, but if you have intentions uh, to be there for 14 days in one spot, you would need to um, get a permit, if I'm understanding. Yeah. Okay, yes. so this means even if you did stay two weeks anyway, the, the likelihood of staying two weeks in the same anchoring spot anyway is very, very slim. So this would definitely not apply to, to our charter guests because they would move about for those 14 days. But point noted. Yes. And then Charlie, Mr. Charlie is asking on the island that is a park, which is St. John, does it also have restaurants? Yes, tons of restaurants, Charlie. Right. So um, you're not going to starve. Restaurants and bars. And, and um, <laughs> people love it. The beach bar is a favorite one because it's you get the great sunset sitting there um, right there on the beach and they have really good food there. Um, extra virgin, tapas, um, Tap and still, longboard. So you have tons of restaurants right there. You can just kind of meander yeah. about through the through the streets. And there was a question <laughs> earlier from Jonathan, or this was before we started, so perhaps it was just a greeting, but I want to make sure we, we didn't miss it. And I think Paul and Lori, I think they were kind of asking if we were only staying seven days, would they need an anchoring permit? I believe that's what he's asking. So right. as you were talking, but I think that... Right. So now it's clear that no, you do not need the long-term permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Good questions. That's While good. we're browsing through the rest of the questions, and I will let Kay do this. As you can see tonight, it's a real team effort. Um, we had uh, a couple of questions come offline earlier. One of them was, how does uh, yacht ownership work? So this is not the subject of today's webinar, but you can definitely find out more information from us about this online, or you can contact yacht sales at navigare-yachting.com or you can contact one of us and we'll put you in touch with the right person. Um, there were some other questions that were related to just chartering in general. Uh, so we don't have like, again, a play-by-play, day-by-day description of what you would do in a typical charter. We can help you and make sure you understand what that would look like when you speak with us. Um, but as you can see, you can really charter your own course, which is really amazing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. Okay, very good. I think we covered most questions. Uh, if there's any questions we have not covered, you should please contact Megan. That's why she's here. Um, or you can find us on online on the Navigari chat on our website. Thank you all again for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you sailing with us very soon. I know I'm going to the USBI. Megan, are you going back to USBI? Yes, I'm going back, yes. Okay, ah. wonderful. It's one of my favorites. Yay. Thank you, Kay, once again. We'll have you back. If we have more questions, we'll do this again. We appreciate your flexibility, your time, your patience through difficulties. Well, well thank, you for, thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.